Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College got awarded a grant that specifically deals with the training and communication aspects of oil and gas personnel with healthcare personnel. So in, in retrospect, it is taking oil and gas personnel and putting them in the same training facility as healthcare and having them train together as a team. The major objective of the program is to see whether or not training together as one unit increases the communication effectiveness as well as um, the effectiveness of the care that is given to these the injured personnel during any type of catastrophic event or emergency or when help is not able to arrive to see whether or not that this communication is effective and going to save lives versus having no help and then trying to fend for themselves and in retrospect having fatalities. The pilot project takes a look at an in-depth on whether or not training oil and gas personnel together with healthcare in the same facility at the same exact time is effective and produces effective communication so that that way when catastrophic events happen like a hurricane or a platform explosion or when help cannot arrive that they are getting the help that they need via the communication line between the healthcare and oil and gas. We're trying to develop a program so we can take some of the oil and gas professionals and enhance and give them a enhance their training, uh, enhance their skill levels and knowledge base, and let them see the other side because we got a medical side and the oil and gas side. So we want the medical people to kind of get a look at the oil and gas side, and we want the oil and gas side to get a look at the medical side. And communication is critical in any anything you do. I think all the participants have definitely, you know, gained knowledge. From this. The high fidelity mannequins replicate exactly what a human person does. And so when you're dealing with, even in oil and gas, when you're dealing with the health and safety aspect of anything, you want it to be as realistic as possible. And the Simman 3Gs, which are considered high fidelity, provide that. They provide the ability for the patient to talk back or the client to talk back to whoever is asking the questions. They breathe, they blink. So without having to utilize a real person like me or somebody else in that scenario, we're able to use somebody else, we're able to use the high fidelity mannequin. So we're not endangering anybody, but at the same exact time, we're giving them the realism that they need. Understandably, simulation cannot be fully real because of course we're not in an actual real environment, but we try and let the students know and the professions know that these scenarios are as realistic as we can get them and that they are to believe that this is a real situation. And once they start the scenario, they tend to forget that it's just a scenario and they actually think that they're really doing this as they would in real life. So having those mannequins enables us to be able to do that. The scenarios were actually very realistic last week, especially um, we dealt with some, some digit amputations with a, a saw incident. We had a a victim that was suspended for an extended period of time and, and these are scenarios being in EMS that we do encounter but they're rare but it was also like I stated earlier it's good to be able to have the nurses there to see what the EMS does as well as seeing the nurses capabilities of being you know on a live scene and also being able to function with you know the basic first responders that would be there on scene on an oil or gas rig. So the scenarios have been very, very realistic and very well thought out and planned. Um, the two scenarios that were developed within this curriculum was a gas exposure in a confined space and then a platform exposure. So for the first scenario, oil and gas personnel have to rescue a person out of a confined space that has um, been exposed to gas. So they have to do their own protocols that they are trained on to assess the confined space, the atmosphere, and then to do what is necessary to clean and, and bring the atmosphere to a level where they can enter and then rescue the person out. And at the same exact time, they're supposed to call for emergency services to come out and help because it's, an, it's a refinery setting. And then they are to maintain the patient and try and help that patient or client until that person, the EMS, comes out and um, is able to take control of the situation. And then once EMS arrives, EMS will arrive, do their assessment, take, take any notes that oil and gas can provide them, and then they will go off to the ER. We're really just doing scenarios and we're trying to like see how it is for people in the oil field, like 
coming from our point of view. So they don't know anything about healthcare, and we do, and we don't know anything about oil field. So it's kind of like we're learning, we're learning like what, what they do. And then today we did a little scenario about a patient came in, he had fell from a seven foot building, I guess. I'm not sure what they call it. But um, he came in, he was exposed to gas. So the first thing we had to do was check his airway and all, make sure that he still had an open airway. And then we had to communicate everything to the doctor. So we really learned a lot about communication and stuff. And today, that's what we, we actually corresponded with some medical type personnel and uh, as did communication is very important on that part and for us to tell them our side as far as the gas readings and, and whatnot and then to tell us, coach us through on what to check for, how to set up their equipment to get the guys out. So the curriculum was developed where oil and gas personnel will have a, an entire day devoted to training based off of what healthcare deal with. So they get an insight as to what it, they pretty much get an insight into the day in the life of a healthcare provider, whether it be EMS or an emergency nurse. And then healthcare, EMS or an emergency nurse will then have a training day specifically designated just for them where they get to see and experience a day in the life of an oil and gas personnel. So they are all limited based off of the environment that they're in, whether it be the equipment, whether it be communication, whether it be um, personnel, they're limited to based off of what that environment provides in the real, in the real profession. And then they will do an eight hour day together where they are put together in the same area to train and they will be in their own profession. So oil and gas will be on oil and gas and healthcare will be in healthcare. And they will actually learn how to communicate and train together from start to finish of a, of a situation. Upon completion of the simulation exercises, the participants expressed improved knowledge and understanding of how proper and effective communication and teamwork plays in the care of clients in any situation. The participants expressed a greater understanding of how important it is to know and understand the professional and environmental differences of each profession in order to effectively communicate and function as a team. The evaluations following the simulation exercises reflected the increased knowledge and understanding of the teamwork and communication. Communication is a big thing. Um, working with the EMS and people who are not in the nursing or in the medical field, um, how to commu communicate with them, it's helped a lot to, to know that they don't know everything that we know and we don't know everything that they know. So it's helped a bunch to get us together and to communicate. My recommendation for this pilot program is that it does become a certification. What I saw while building the pilot, the curriculum, and doing and conducting the simulation exercises was that this training is vital. I have spoken with the advisory board and there are many members of that board that also expressed that this training would be vital and help to eliminate unnecessary expenses for higher training. To conclude, it is in everybody's best interest, whether you're industrial, healthcare, or just the public, to have this type of training to show that we are looking at everybody's health, we are looking at the environment, and we are looking at the safety aspects, and that we understand that training together as a team, even if individual training is prior to but still giving team-based training is vital and that we are hearing the concerns of the public and the professions. 